Hello everyone and welcome back to Strife Solutions. I'm of course William Strife and this is Yogscast Complete, or Yog Pack if you prefer, a special version of modded Minecraft for us, the Yogscast. If you want to play along, you can get it off of the AT launcher. A uh, link is down in the description. So, uh, without any other introductions, uh, today guys, well, last time, last time I, I finally got full and complete ore processing together down in the, uh, the basement of the tower. And uh, I'm not even going to touch on that again because I'm happy to have uh, left that whole process behind. And um, today, today I basically want to, uh, I want to get to the oil platform, okay? Now, you know, I have gone through the trouble of piping, uh, pumping tons of oil out of the ground. And this tank here is 100% full at this point, I think. Um, yeah, it's 100% full. It's completely maxed out. So what I want to do this episode is I basically want to run quickly through the whole process of turning oil into fuel. And I also want to uh, put something in this back tank here. And I think I've got an idea for it. I was originally thinking uh, biomass, but I've got something a little bit more appropriate for Strife Solutions. Um, so I'm going to turn the oil into fuel and put it in this tank. And I'll show you the process by which that is done. Uh, so uh, yeah, but... What's most important is in this episode is wireless power, okay? Um, I built the large uh, farm facility down there specifically so I could uh, get uh, farm up ender pearls. And um, looks like the farm fields are empty. Uh, I specifically built the fields down there, uh, the greenhouse down there, to farm up ender pearls so that I could uh, get tesseracts going. And that's something that I just haven't done, despite the fact that I actually um, got my hands on enough ender pearls long ago. So. In order to make tesseracts, the first thing that I'm going to need to do is uh, melt up uh, ender pearls. And uh, to do that, you just put it in a magma crucible. It'll melt it up and put it over here in the tank as resonant ender. Um, get 250 per pearl. I have a, a few more of them in my uh, chest over here. But uh, let's uh, let's run down the list of the things that I look uh, to doing today. So I need to make a tesseract and, and a tesseract is w uh, the method from thermal expansion by which you can wirelessly teleport um, power around the map. Okay, so it's it basically gives me the full power of my reactor anywhere in the world that I want it. Okay, all I have to do is make certain that I put down a chunk loader here so that the reactor remains um, running and active. And I can then use another Tesseract tuned to the same frequency and use all of the power, which is, you know, pretty freaking awesome. Um, but Tesseracts were, once upon a time, they were fairly easy to make. Uh, now Tesseracts require a much larger, more elongated process to uh, create. They require more equipment. Um, and then after I make a Tesseract, I also need to make an oil refinery, and I also want to make liquefacted coal for the tanks out there. So um, that's all stuff on the list today. So, first off, Tesseract. To make a Tesseract, you first have to make an empty Tesseract frame. And to make this baby, you have to have hardened glass or fused glass, either will do, um, and dirium ingots and a diamond. Now, the endirium is really the most difficult part, because to make this stuff, you have to combine endirium blend with pyrothium dust in an induction smelter. And the endirium blend is composed of tin dust, platinum dust, and a bucket of resonant ender, which is the reason why I'm working on it. Uh, but what's more is that to make the pyrothium dust, I also need uh, ground up coal, sulfur, blaze powder, and redstone. Now I should have everything in the chest here that I need. Here we go. Two stacks of pyrothium dust. This stuff will be uh, plenty useful. Uh, this is also something that you can use to instantaneously and on the fly just melt up, uh, smelt up your ores. Um, you know, it's it's something good to have on hand if whenever you go uh, on an adventure or a mining expedition. Uh, maybe you have Tinker's Construct weapons and tools that are made out of metal. If you find your if you find the metal, then you can uh, repair your stuff on the fly, etc. With a uh, table. I don't know. I'm just trying to come up with. Uh, reasonable purposes why it may be useful. So, uh, okay, there's the pyrothium dust. Next up is the endirium blend, which is the tin, uh, shiny metal or platinum dust and uh, resonant ender. So, okay, the tin and the platinum are all crushed up. Now I just need to get grab some uh, resonant ender and... Can I... No, it doesn't look like I can actually bucket anything out of this, so I'm gonna have to uh, utilize some sort of a tank. Okay, got a tank. Should be able to just puke it all out into this uh, open blocks tank right here. And it looks like it's working just fine. 
uh, drained it completely. Not as much of the stuff as I was expecting to have there. I'm, I'm probably going to need to melt up some more. Um, but with that in my inventory, now I can go ahead and create the Enderium blend. There we go, some resident ender. Okay, so uh, as it turns out, I've only have enough uh, ender pearls to make 32 Enderium blend. I'm pretty sure that that's enough. Uh, next up is to open up, yeah, the induction smelter. Go ahead and put that in the left and put the pyrothium dust in the right. Am I saying that right? Pyrothium? Yeah, it should be pyrothium. And that'll smelt up and it'll give me some uh, Enderium bars. Okay, and while that smelts up, it's also possible for me to make some uh, hardened glass. I could use fused quartz, but I'm gonna make hardened glass this time around. It can be made in an induction smelter with uh, eight obsidian dust to one lead, uh, either dust or an ingot, but there's a unique little workaround. You can use an alloy smelter from Ender.io, and it only takes one obsidian dust with a lead ingot to make two hardened glass, so um, it's easier on uh, how much of the... Oh my god, I didn't know that I had fused quartz in there. Okay, well, I'm just going to go ahead and chuck those in there, and it's going to go ahead and it's going to smelt me up some hardened glass, and I guess I'll use the uh, fused quartz since I have it on me, and uh, all I'm going to need is a diamond. I'll go ahead and grab this enderium out. Okay, so I've got the uh, diamond, the fused quartz, and the enderium ingots, so I'll go ahead and shift-click. Uh, you know what, I think four tesseracts is going to be more than enough. I don't know that I actually need that many. Um, to be quite technical, I only need two, but having backups is never a bad idea. So the next thing that I need to do is fill up the tesseract frame. And to do that, I have to uh, insert resonant ender into a fluid transposer and then send it through the uh, whole entire process of... Uh, a fluid transposer basically puts stuff into... Uh, puts liquids into other things. And I have a fluid transposer here. But I just realized that I don't have any, um, any more ender pearls on me. I'm gonna have to go down to the farm and fix that. I should have enough essence. Okay, so uh, while those ender pearls uh, smelt up, I'm gonna go ahead and check off resonant ender, enderium, and pyrothium dust. Uh, next, th the next thing that I want to do is I want to make myself an oil refinery. Okay, here we go. Refinery from Buildcraft Factory, and it looks like there's a refinery plus. I don't actually know what the difference between these two is, other than. Uh, to make the Refinery Plus, you need a whole bunch more stuff, lasers, anvil, chipsets, assembly table, etc. Uh, I figure this probably works faster. Uh, I don't know that for certain. If it does, I'll upgrade it at a later point in time. Uh, until then, though, uh, I'm just going to make the standard refinery, which is composed of buildcraft tanks, redstone torches, and the diamond gear. And again, the diamond gear is, you know, a gold gear surrounded by diamonds. Di uh, a gold is an iron. An iron is a stone, a stone is a wood, you know, etc. So uh, I got to take my way up to the proper level gear. But I think um, if I check my loot box, here we go. I do have diamond gears here. I do have gold gears here. These are uh, things that I've found lying around in the world when adventuring with Parv. Speaking of Parv, look at that stupid face. <laughs> Anyways. All right, so I should have everything in my inventory. I'll just go ahead and shift-click this, and there we go. We've got a refinery from Buildcraft. Now, I'm going to need more than one of these ultimately, but for now, this will do the job. I'll go ahead and uh, check oil refinery off the list. Next thing that I'm going to need to make is liquefacted coal. And uh, liquefacted coal is obviously going to require a whole lot of coal, and I've got a magma crucible here, which um, is required to turn this stuff into liquid. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just shift... Uh, click all of that stuff out and I'm going to refill up the uh, the magma crucible over here and uh, fill it up with ender pearls and I'm going to put on the uh, the coal to uh, double more or less. Okay I should have more than enough resonant ender. It, it only takes a thousand of this stuff to uh, fill one tesseract and I've got four of these so uh, I should have more than enough. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and take this tank and just place it on top there. There we go. Resident Ender going into the fluid transposer. I'll go ahead and insert the uh, Tesseract frame, empty Tesseract frames into it next by popping them into the top slot. And it'll work away. And um, it'll put the Resident Ender into the Tesseract frames. And once that's done, uh, it should be finished. Okay, here we go. Four Tesseract frames that are full. The next step is to just go ahead... Uh, so the final step to get these Tesseracts complete is to just surround them with bronze and silver. So we'll go ahead and shift click there and there we go. We've got four full completed Tesseracts. Now, it's been a long time since I've used this. Oh, look at that. There's already a network in place. So 
We'll call the network strife power. We will set the security to owner only. I don't want anyone else stealing my power on the server, even if accidentally. So um, I've given it a frequency. I've given it a name and I've saved it. And there we go. There we go. Set frequency to 263 strife power. And uh, there you go. You've got one single Tesseract that's going to uh, transmit power. It's going to transmit um, everything that I could possibly need. Uh, I can set this to sending and receiving and whatnot. So all I have to really do is connect this to the, uh, the power network downstairs. But to be quite honest, I'm not going to do that uh, unless I actually need it. So... Okay, so uh, with the Tesseracts complete, let's go ahead and check that off the list. And now what I have to do is actually start turning oil into uh, fuel and liquefacting coal. So uh, I'll just go ahead and grab an ultimate energy cube. I'll get something a little bit more complete and stable set up at a later date. But let's come down here to the oil facility. I just want to cover this very, very quickly. Um, pop in here. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to set this refinery down, say, right about there, and, uh, oops, rotate it around. And I'll go ahead and take the ultimate energy cube and just put it down right there, say, and um, I might hide the cables at a later date. But now the uh, the refinery is full up, and it's probably inf uh, infinitely sucking the power out, which means that I need basically a renewable fuel uh, energy source, because uh, build craft equipment, it extracts... Um, it takes power all the time, whether it actually needs the power the whole time or not. So I'll go ahead and hook it up like so. Uh, take my configurator tool here and start extracting oil from the tank and putting it into the refinery. And uh, as this thing continues to power up, it will, uh, it's gonna turn the fuel, it's gonna turn the oil into fuel, this yellow stuff. And from there, I want the pipe to come over here. Oops, that's a little bit too far and hook up to the tank above, set it to actually extract the fuel, and it'll send it up into the tank above, and there you go. Um, I am now generating fuel for um, the dynamic tank above. Now, it's gonna take a long time to go through all of this stuff, and that also means that I'm moving towards uh, actually, you know, uh, getting my hands on I'm going to need to start pumping more oil out if I want this tank to stay full and look really, really awesome on the server. So um, there you go. That's how you make uh, your fuel. Just supply it with power. Granted, this thing only takes build craft power. I want to make a point out of that. And the reason why it's working with the uh, redstone flux that's coming out of the ultimate energy cube is because the... Uh, the, 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 the universal energy cables that come out of mechanism, they're smart. They're going to output um, any type of power that you require. Uh, specifically, it, these things, they can take electrical units from industrial craft. They can take build craft, uh, mine, build craft jewels, minecraft jewels, and they can take redstone flux, and they will put out whatever version of power, and they will actively uh, convert the power between mods, okay? So it, it's, it's a form of universal electricity, and the only reason why I can run this thing off of redstone flux is because of these cables okay I just want to make that completely clear but um, that's not all I've, I've got this uh, I've got this energy cube here and uh, the power running through it what I also need to do is make liquefacted coal and to make liquefacted coal I need to take a magma crucible I'm just gonna pop it down right there so it goes straight up into the tank above it and uh, come into configuration here I'm gonna set that to orange there we go, I have just enough. So um, this thing is now getting power. All I have to do is supply it with um, coal and it will... Ah, okay, okay, wow. My my massive mistake there. Um, you cannot supply the magma crucible with straight coal. You have to grind it up first, which means that I need to go back into the facility and uh, crush up a bunch of this uh, coal and turn it into coal dust. Okay, I should have more than enough coal dust now. I'll... Getting a little bit of lag, okay. Uh, more than enough coal dust at this point. I'll go ahead and uh, switch the input configuration here. And uh, I'm going to put down a hopper. Followed by a chest. And I'll go ahead and put some of the coal powder in there. And uh, open this up and just dump the rest of the coal powder in there. I'll, I'll be able to, you know, basically queue this up. But this is going to make the liquefacted coal. And as you can see, it's already going into the tank above me. And I have more than a thousand uh, micro buckets or uh, Minecraft buckets. 
uh, installed already, and it's going to take me a while to run through all of the power in this ultimate energy cube, and I don't know why, but it looks like my frame rate is just kind of taking a dump. Um, might have something to do with the fact that I was looking at the factory. I'm, I might need to do a little bit of minor adjustment to the, um, the processing basement in the tower because uh, I, I seem to be noticing a uh, distinct problem with frame rate every single time I go into the tower these days, so uh, that, that might need a little bit of work in the background. But there you go, guys. Um, that's everything. A little bit of a mishmash episode. I made myself a Tesseract uh, oil refinery, and I'm making liquefacted coal to store uh, all sorts of wondrous uh, fuel types here, because, you know, I'm not always going to have access to the uh, nuclear power in the basement, and for that matter, I'm not the power that I'm generating off of the reactor isn't for sale. This stuff is what's for sale. And uh, it's going to take a while to turn all of it into uh, something that matters. And for that matter, I think I need to go ahead and remove this my chunk loader because it's not necessary. So, uh, yeah, there you go, guys. This has been another episode of Strife Solutions with me, William Strife. And um, I'm finally making myself some, you know, fuel, liquefacted coal, and I've got a way to teleport power indefinitely around the map for any sort of mining operation that I could potentially need. But uh, until next time, guys, I am William Strife of Strife Solutions. This has been Yogpack, and I'll see you guys later. Bye! Bye.